Love Canal Contamination In the 40s and 50s, a company thought it was a good idea to bury chemical waste in a neighborhood in Love Canal in Niagara Falls, New York. The company previously arranged with the government to dump less harmful waste, but they thought they could get away with what they did when they included harmful chemical waste into the mix, as entire homes were built on that land without the company telling anyone what was underneath the soil. Over time, the waste started seeping into the ground and contaminating the water and soil in the area. People started noticing it when they got sick and smelled chemicals in the air. The residents finally called for immediate government action, as the area was declared a disaster zone during the 70s. Entire families had to be relocated because of the incident, but it was already too late because over 700 deaths could be traced to the contamination. Chernobyl Disaster In 1986, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine conducted tests that simulated a power outage. However, the simulation was messed up when the power levels dropped below safe levels, causing the volatile nuclear reactor to blow up and release high levels of radioactive material. As Murphy's Law states, anything that can go wrong will go wrong, and at the worst possible time. The power plant's design wasn't safe, because it lacked a containment structure. So things went wrong quickly when the flawed design combined with human error at the worst possible time. Things didn't stop with the big explosion. The radioactive material released by the explosion forced people from nearby areas to evacuate immediately. However, the resettlement process was long and tiring for the displaced residents as over 350,000 people had to move out of their homes. For years, cancer rates and environmental damage associated with the Chernobyl disaster lingered, turning Chernobyl into one of the most horrific sites in recent human history. Centralia Mine Fire Centralia, Pennsylvania used to be a mining town with regular people, but in 1962, a few workers were clearing up a landfill near an old mine entrance in preparation for Memorial Day. Not understanding the potential consequences of their actions, they took the easy way out by burning the garbage instead of disposing of it properly. The fire didn't just burn the trash, instead it found its way deep into the coal mine. Coal, being flammable and all, kept the flames burning for a long time, until they reached the deepest parts of the mine. The entire scene was like putting a forest fire out with a bucket of water. But what made things worse was that no one could get to the underground coal veins to put the flames out. It was a classic case of, if you play with fire, you get burned. There were no direct fatalities associated with the fire, but Centralia became a ghost town when residents evacuated it due to the potential health concerns of the toxic air. The Centralia mine fire still burns to this day and is estimated to continue to burn for at least 250 more years. Deep Water Horizon Oil Spill in 2010, the Deepwater Horizon oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico became the site of one of the biggest environmental disasters in human history when it exploded, causing severe environmental damage to the surrounding waters. A cement barrier was supposed to seal the oil rig, but engineering and management failures diminished its quality. Meanwhile, issues with the safety device that was supposed to prevent blowouts also occurred, add a dash of human error, and the oil rig went boom, releasing millions of gallons of oil into the Gulf of Mexico. The massive oil spill damaged the nearby waters and animals, coating birds and fish in oil. However, the aftermath was just as bad, because cleaning up the mess cost billions. Moreover, the environmental damage was so extensive that the total losses amounted to tens of billions of dollars. Cuyahoga River Fire The Cuyahoga River in Cleveland, Ohio was a dumping ground for industrial waste, when corporations didn't have to spend an extra dime to dispose of their trash correctly. Oil slicks floated around the river turning it into a flowing soup of hot mess. In 1950, the oil and trash ignited, causing approximately a million in property damage. Then, in 1969, sparks from a passing train ignited the fire, turning it into a flaming disaster. The inferno, once called a river, burned intensely, fueled by a combination of oil and other flammable toxic substances. While a river fire by itself is harmful when it causes significant property damage, what makes matters worse is the release of toxic fumes into the water and the atmosphere, which damages aquatic habitats and contaminates the water supply. This wasn't the first time or worst of its kind, because the 1950 fire was much more dreadful. But it caught the public's attention, forcing the government to pass the Clean Water Act and establish the Environmental Protection Agency. Great Smog of London In 1952, London was experiencing rapid industrialization a few years after the end of the Second World War. Factories were belching smoke 
smoke, and households were burning wood and coal to keep warm. These factors coincided with freak weather conditions, such as windless days and low temperatures. The result was the Great Smog of London, as smoke and other air pollutants hung in the air, leaving a foul smell that blanketed the entire city. It wasn't just inconvenient for people to walk around inhaling smog, instead the pollutants messed with people's respiratory systems, causing damage to their lungs. The young and elderly were the most likely to suffer breathing problems. Hospitals were overflowing, and different people were dying left and right. It is estimated that over 4,000 people died in the immediate aftermath. However, studies suggest that the number rose to 12,000 due to deaths associated with the long-term effects of the Great Smog. The disaster was a wake-up call to the British government, which passed the Clean Air Act of 1956 to reduce air pollution by regulating industrial sources and encouraging the use of cleaner fuel. Gulf of Mexico Dead Zone There is a literal dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico, as this is like the death valley of marine life. But this isn't a natural phenomenon. Instead, the dead zone results from human carelessness, causing a domino effect. It starts with the chemicals used on crops to help them grow bigger and stronger. Agriculture runoff and sewage from using those chemicals end up in rivers and streams that flow into the Gulf of Mexico. The same chemicals fertilize algae in the water, allowing them to grow until a massive bloom. Dead algae sink to the bottom of the ocean floor and are eaten by bacteria. The bacteria in this area suck all of the water's oxygen, causing a dead zone with no oxygen for marine life. When sea creatures swim into this dead zone, it's like throwing a man into space without an oxygen tank. But the impact doesn't stop there, because the fish either try to avoid the Gulf of Mexico or end up dead when they accidentally swim into the dead zone, fishermen go home empty-handed. So while fertilizers strengthen our crops, karma balances things out by delivering a gut punch to the environment and the economy through this dead zone. Exxon Valdez Oil Spill in 1989, the captain of the Exxon Valdez oil tanker decided to put the ship in the care of his third mate so that he could go below decks to nap. He could have given the wheel to a better navigator, but gave it to the inexperienced third mate instead. The worst part was that the ship had turned off its reef detection system to save money. What could have been an avoidable incident turned into an environmental disaster when the Exxon Valdez crashed into a reef in Alaska. The result was over 11 million gallons of oil gushing out of the ship and into the water, causing immense environmental damage to local wildlife. Every sea otter, fish, and bird was coated in oil. The company spent $2 billion to clean up the mess. An additional $1 billion was spent to settle any civil and criminal charges that resulted from the oil spill. As for the captain, it was initially reported that he was drunk when the accident happened. He was eventually cleared of the drunk driving charges, but was still held liable for negligently putting the ship under the care of an inexperienced subordinate. Bhopal Gas Tragedy On a night in December 1984 in Bhopal, India, the Union Carbide Pesticide Plant leaked deadly methyl isocyanate gas, a substance often used in industry but is notorious for its harmful health and environmental effects. The cause of the incident was a perfect storm of poor equipment, negligence, and cost-cutting. The power plant itself already had outdated technology and problematic safety measures. The workers were poorly trained and hardly followed safety protocols for cost-cutting reasons. But the cherry on top was the chemical waste just left inside the plant, waiting for something terrible to happen at any given moment. The plant's safety systems failed the night of the disaster and gas started leaking into the air. Thousands of people in the nearby area woke up choking and with a burning sensation in their lungs. Over 3,800 people died from that incident just a few days after that. As to the company responsible for the mess, it faced legal battles and financial problems until Dow Chemical Company bought it in 2001. Three Mile Island Accident Located in Pennsylvania, USA, the Three Mile Island Nuclear Generating Station was one of America's earliest nuclear power plants. But in 1979, a malfunction in its cooling system caused the reactor to overheat. One of the valves was stuck open, allowing the coolant to leak out and making matters worse. However, the operators underestimated the situation and made a series of wrong decisions when they thought that they had things under control. Only when the damage had already been done did they realize the gravity of the situation. Luckily, the containment structure held up and prevented a full-blown nuclear disaster that could have been worse. Radioactive gases released by the reactor 
reactor were mostly contained within the power plant. However, environmental monitoring following the near meltdown showed that there were higher levels of radioactivity within the vicinity. There were no long-term damages to the surrounding areas, but it had lasting effects on public perception of nuclear power plants and whether or not nuclear energy sources are safe. Minamata Disease Disaster In the 1960s and 1970s, a chemical company never considered the consequences of dumping methyl mercury into Minamata Bay in Japan. The Japanese rely heavily on fish for food, but the company never considered the methyl mercury contaminating the bay's fish. When people started getting sick, it was dismissed as a simple case of flu season. But the sickness messed with the infected people's nervous system, causing numbness, convulsions, and even insanity. The illness became known as the Minamata disease. Thousands of people suffered from the disease, and hundreds of deaths could be traced back to the contaminated fish. It wasn't just a simple health crisis, because it was now an environmental catastrophe caused by industrial greed when the chemical company didn't want to spend an extra buck to dispose of their waste correctly. Chiso Corporation, the company responsible, was forced to compensate victims and clean up the contaminated area. So instead of saving money, they destroyed lives and spent hundreds of millions of yen. Aral Sea Ecological Crisis The Aral Sea used to be one of the world's largest inland bodies of water, but has become desert due to human activity. During the 1940s, the Soviet Union saw the rivers feeding the Aral Sea as a possible water source for its irrigation projects. It diverted water from the rivers, hoping to convert arid lands into fertile farmlands. But the problem was that they didn't expect their actions to prevent water from reaching the Aral Sea like a tourniquet cutting circulation. During the 1960s, water from the Aral Sea steadily disappeared, leaving nothing but salt and chemicals behind. Not too long later, the lake turned into a bowl of desert sand. Marine life and animals that depended on the waters of the Aral Sea either died or were displaced. Moreover, people who depended on the lake for their livelihood were affected. What was once a thriving fishing community had all but disappeared. The worst part is that pollutants from the dried up lake bed started affecting the residents' health because the government didn't think things through when they diverted waters from the Aral Sea.